<laughs> yeah, I forgot about this uh, video. I just remembered. So I'll make it on my way back, uh, walking back to the car. Is uh, if, you, if you knew that your penis was going to fall off by doing semen retention, would you still do it? What's the point? What's the point of saying this? The point of saying this is to check your level of commitment. Because I can tell you most people wouldn't do it. Most people are saying no right then when I ask the question. Why? Because the strong mechanical conditioning and addictions and habits we have to fulfill our senses and to get attention from the opposite sex, right? First thought is like, whoa, I can't get a girl if I don't have any equipment. It never occurs. It does. Some of you guys leave comments. It does occur to you, actually. I like it. <coughs> For most, it won't occur to them and say, wait a minute, though. If I didn't, if I totally gave up this idea about sex and getting a girl and all that, damn, I'm, my life might be super uh, nice and serene and calm. Yeah, you see? Otherwise, so you got to ask yourself this question and contemplate this question. What's more important, a serene, calm, stable life or <clears throat> getting your senses pleased and getting dopamine hits and getting, you know, attraction from girls, all that? What's more important? Now, the mind wants both. That's the thing. It wants both. What to do? You have to go through this evolutionary journey. <clears throat> That's what I had to do. I can only share, like, how can I share something that uh, I didn't go through? It'd be fake. That's why <clears throat> I don't share techniques or anything, because I haven't found any that actually ever worked. And I was in India and I studied all kinds of yoga practices and meditation practices and took all kinds of herbs and Ayurvedic treatment and fasting and all that stuff. And was it helpful? Okay, maybe. But I'm pointing to the quintessential uh, principle of freedom. If you want to do those other things, they might assist you depending on the, <clears throat> the moment you're in. It's fine. I'm not saying like nothing's you know, bad or good, but the main core, the core level of freedom comes by grace. There's no other way. How are you going to shift your, your deepest biological nature and just turn that off and just be fine with it? You're just going to turn off the sexual instinct. <clears throat> I'm going to go outside. I don't even notice girls. Just going to turn it off. Ah, oh, there, I met a girl. Oh, she's nice. Okay. I'm going to allow myself to get activated. Yeah. As, as though the, these things are a decision. Haven't you realized like we're, we, we, you're like powerless over this? You're powerless over how this chemistry operates through your system? I mean, do you really think you can control it or take some kind of herb and uh, intruders? You think you can just take something and then it's, it's going to like, you know, you found the loophole on how to beat the second most strongest uh, sexual instinct that the instinct that we have. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> so if you realize, this is the first step, you realize what you're dealing with <clears throat> and realize you can't like control it. And then you might start to sense some universal power activating you. <laughs> which is responsible for creating this whole machine in the first place. Do you realize this human garb is a machine? Or do you really think this is what you are? Yeah, those who have had near-death experiences or through deep meditation or through plant medicine experiences, you guys know. Yeah, this is just some clothes we're wearing temporarily. <clears throat> so we need to get the universal power that created this machine, that intelligence, we need it to help free us from be, uh, this excessive sexual instinct. Sexual instinct's cool, but we don't want it to be extreme and excessive. So the title of this video, I feel, is a, <laughs> it's a good reflective question. How important is it to me that <clears throat> it, this sexual instinct and expressing it and having sex and getting girls to look at me and all that stuff, like how important is it I can tell you already for most people, it's super important. It's, it's so important that they spend the majority of their day, every day, 
<laughs> and night thinking about it on some level or another. They think about it so much, they don't even know that they're doing it because there's no contrast. If you're thinking about something all the time, how are you gonna know you're thinking about it? Because you're just thinking about it all the time. That's how my life was. I edged so much, there's no way I knew I was edging. It just became automatic. Somebody would talk, if I heard a video speaking about like edging, I just, I would turn it off or I'd call them stupid. Like some people try to do with me. <laughs> so I understand it, I think it's funny. I'm seeing my previous self <clears throat> in that immature season be expressed because this is evolution. This is what consciousness does. It, it's playing all these different seasons through all these different forms. This is why for those of you who have um, <clears throat> a bit of living wisdom, you've went through these stages and you can help somebody else because they're in the same stage you used to be. Like, you know it, like you can just see it, you know? So you really have to meditate on that. <laughs> Like, am I missing anything? Like, what am I missing? Like, if I never had sex again, I, this is this used to be, this is how I've always been moved <clears throat> and directed uh, to contemplate things. I would take things to the extreme because then I could really, really <clears throat> ascertain like what's going on in, in my, my mind and my deepest desires. So my mind, I would look and see like, all right, if I never can have sex again, if, if a girl never gives me attention again, ever, how does that feel? At first, there's some feeling like, oh, no, like you, you can feel. You, this is the point of doing the exercise. <laughs> you can feel like something's like, no, I couldn't handle that. Get in touch with that. Like. What's the big deal? And then you might find some space opens up. You're like, damn, that might be nice after all, actually. You see? Don't trust these, these automatic <clears throat> compulsions and habits, you know, that, you, that you've been used to functioning in for so long. You're not missing anything. It's God's business if you find a girl, in God's business if you have sex, in God's business about everything, actually. We just imagine it's our business. This is why I made the spiritual channel, Spiritual Renaissance, because we get more into that. It's like, wait a minute, who's really running the show here? Yeah. So let me know, <clears throat> let me know what you came up with. What, if you contemplate that question, if you're... If you did see me retention, your equipment fell off, would you keep doing it? Do you, or it's like, it's like this, either, either I keep doing PMO and edging, or either I keep edging, or if I stop edging, I lose my equipment. What would you do? And if you, if you say, no, I gotta keep my equipment, <laughs> that must mean uh, this is this is the good part about the exercise. I think I'm lost actually, but uh, this is a good part about the exercise. You check it. See that question? That question. If I if I was to quit edging, my equipment would fall off. So I, I either do that or I'm just going to keep edging and little PMO if I want. If you choose the edging and PMO, it means that you haven't hit bottom yet. You haven't yet realized the debaucherous negative effects that edging and PMO can do to your nervous system. Because let me tell you, if you really hit bottom with that, you're not going to care if your equipment falls off. Yeah. How many of you are at that level already? Let me know. See you.